healing, salvation, and happiness. It's your season. It's your time. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity. Father, I don't take it lightly. Father, I, I just pray that you just hide me near your cross. Let something in this mouth based on experiences, based on what you've shown me, based on what I, how I live. But whatever it is, Father, let it be of you and not me. And I just I just pray that somebody's eyes will be open today, that they will draw closer to you and what you're trying to say to them today before the, make, they make this big decision, decision just going, around, going on all around the world. But I, faith, I pray that their eyes are enlightened today and their hearts are changed and they will commit themselves to you and you only. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our subject this morning is will you marry me? Will you marry me? And like I said, it's going to be a, a twist to the subject because I'm not speaking on this subject as a man and a wife. I'm speaking as a servant of the Lord. I'm speaking as someone that God is asking and talking to. So it's a little twist, but it all works together. You know, the natural and spiritual always comes together, so it's gonna come together. So open up your ears and hear this morning what I'm trying to say. And I hope and pray that you guys will get this, not only just for singles, this is also for couples. This message is for everybody. Genesis 9, starting with verse one. And God bless Noah, and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. And the fear of you, and the dread of you, shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea, and to your hands are they delivered. Let's go to verse 9. And I, behold, I will establish my covenant with you, and with you, your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle is with you, and every beast and of the earth from you, and all the go, and all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by waters of a flood, neither shall there be any more flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. I know that that was a lot, but I pray the Lord will add a blessing to the hearer and doer and reader of his word. I want to establish, and I, and I want to key in on this one word, and that is covenant. I want to key in on the word covenant because that's what marriage is about. That's what God requires for us to have with him. As of again, the subject today is, will you marry me? And I want to talk about in Genesis, has God, has God began to establish a covenant, a covenant, a, a binding between agreement between two parties of agreement, of, of a vow, of, 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 of such a contractual agreement that it, it, it's sacred. It cannot be broken. So when we look at a covenant, we also look at that It's what God is requiring also in, in a marriage. He requires a covenant. So let us go 
between what is a covenant is. It's a relationship between two parties, parties who make binding promises to each other. It's a Greek word is to order or dispose for oneself to another, to work together for the common goal. I'm talking about a covenant and what it's meant to be a covenant. In the Old Testament, beret. That's the that's Greek word, beret. And it's mentioned over 280 times in the Bible. That's what it, it means to have a covenant. It's a beret or beret or whatever you want to call it. And then in the New Testament, it's mentioned 33 times in the Bible. And it is diathek. Diathek. So a covenant is, is mentioned a lot in mostly the Old Testament, which is over 200. In 80 times. And a covenant is accompanied by oaths, it's accompanied by signs, and it's accompanied by ceremonies. So a covenant is, is meaningful to God. It's a promise between two parties. It is sacred. It, it, it is holy. As God established this covenant early on in the book of Genesis with Noah, he establishes, well, first he establishes with Adam. He established his first covenant ever in the Garden of Adam as he gave him dominion and, and told him what to do. It was a covenant. It was an agreement between two parties. So this is not the first time we're seeing God consistently making a covenant over the earth, over his people. And, and, and covenant is very important to God. It is very important. Covenant is much different than a contract. A contract is, is mostly on paper. It's a legal binding. I believe a contract is something that we when we, when we say marriage, it's, it's like a contract. Yes, you don't sign really anything, but you come in agreement and you get a marriage certificate. And it, it's kind of like a contract. You be this way, you, the vows. If you listen to the vows, it's all contractual. For sickness and health, till death do us part. It is a contract that we'll be, we'll be together in, in, in this type of manner. It is a contract. And God is saying that is that is true. You, you know, you're supposed to do those things. You're supposed to be like that with your significant other. Other, But I'm calling somebody to be something more than a contract. I'm so, calling somebody, whether you're in a relationship or whether you're going into a relationship, I'm calling on marriages. I'm calling on singles. I'm calling on each and every individual to have a covenant with me. I don't want a contract because a contract can get torn up. A contract can go null and void. A contract don't mean anything. I'm looking for somebody today that's willing to come in to covenant. And you said, Molina, what is what God is saying about covenant? A covenant, I, I just read it to you, is an agreement. It is a sacred agreement. It is sealed. And once you make a covenant with God, it's sealed and it cannot be broken. God mentioned covenants, over seven covenants in the Bible. And maybe next Sunday I'll go over each one of them with you. You may have heard of them. The first one is the Edenic covenant, the Noahic covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, the Mosaic covenant, the Priestly covenant, the Davidic covenant, and the New covenant. Those are seven types of covenant I found that was mentioned in the Bible. And, and some of these we have heard of, and some of these, the new covenant, we, we, we know a lot of the new covenant where we live in today is we're living on the new covenant. We're, we're living in the New Testament realm. So we know about some of these covenants, and God is saying that these covenants that I established hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, it, they're not to be broken. He said, I set my bow, my bow in the earth. We know the rainbow. We know it's how we see the rainbow. We smile. Not only because it's beautiful and it's pretty and it's a rainbow and it's something we don't never see that much, but we smile because we understand that it's a God reminding us that he hasn't forgot about us. He is reminding us that his promise is still yes and amen. And he has not forgotten that he will not destroy this earth like he did before with flood waters. We don't know what it's going to be. We say fire. We don't know what it's going to be. But he sends his bow as a reminder of the covenant between Noah, him, and the earth, and all the living creatures. Covenant is sacred to God. It's not to be broken. It is sacred. God is not going to break his covenant with us. He's not going to break his covenant. If he breaks his covenant with Noah, then guess what? We call God a liar. That's why we see the rainbow. That's why we keep seeing it. That's why it's in the sky. That's why we always see it. We pass it. Because God reminds us that what I said to you over thousands and thousands of years ago is true. I'm not going to break it. But I'm disappointed today. 
Because we're living in a society, we're living in a world that we are breaking our promises, not only to God, we're breaking our promises to our children, we're breaking our promises to our significant others, to our husband and wives, and we're just lying, and we're just breaking promises, like it's okay to just live any kind of way. And God is saying that's not the way that he wants us to live, he wants to come with us, each individual, into a covenant with him. When you come into a covenant with God, and then when the flood comes, when the rain comes, when the storms come, guess what? Then you're covered. Woo! When, when Noah came in agreement with God, God covered Noah. He covered his whole family. He said, I'll never do it again. And I said to your family, I told you what I was going to do, and I did it. You don't have to worry about me going back on my word. This word is true. It is sacred. It is holy. And that's what I require from my people. That's what I require. God is asking somebody today, will you marry me? Will you seek me first in all things and, and get away from this childish stuff? Get away from the foolishness. Get away from all the stuff of this and the cares of this world. I want somebody to come into agreement. And you come in agreement to me, I will show you your husband. I will show you your wife. I will show you who you're supposed to be with. Glory to God. God requires us to be in covenant with him before anybody. He formed this earth. He formed man in the likeness in his own image. We are the first on the earth. So why do you think God requires us to have covenant with you? To be as one, to come to agreement that you know what, God, I'm not going to make a decision unless I assault you. I'm not going to do anything unless I assault you. God requires covenant. Let us get back to covenant. Let us get back to repentance of sin. Let us get back to our first and only love. Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And he died for you. He died for me. He requires us to come in agreement. He requires us to love him with all our heart, all our body, all our soul. Glory to God. Why is covenant so important to God? Because he told Noah in the beginning, he said, I, it's important because I don't want you to forget. I don't want you to forget what I said. I don't want you to forget what I required for you to do. I don't want you to forget who I am. I don't want you to forget that I brought you in this world and I'm the only one can take you out. It's important because God said it. It's important because his word is true and his decisions are final and all his promises are yes and amen. It's important because he can stand on the word of the Lord. You can stand on the word of the Lord. Woo! It is important to be in agreement. It is important to be in covenant with God because it's sacred. It is holy. And he says for us to be holy because he is holy. Nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to hear it. And we wonder why our marriages don't last. We wonder why our relationships don't last. We wonder why things just don't last. Woo! Could it be that we've gotten out of covenant? Could it be that we saw something else more than we saw God? And God is saying, I, I, I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you that you chose somebody else to be your first love. I'm not mad. I'm jealous. But I'm not mad that you put somebody, you put that child over me. I'm not mad that you put that spouse over me. I'm not mad that you put that job over me. But I'm a jealous God. And I'm willing to forgive you. If you repent of all sins, and come back to the covenant. Come back to your first love. I will forgive you. I don't normally do it this way because once you break a covenant with me, I, 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 I tend to kind of get a little mad. But I'm willing to forgive. I am a just God. I'm a God of honesty. I'm a God of forgiving. I'm a loving God. And I, I forgive you. 
And I'm asking you today. The only way that I'll be able to forgive you, the only way I'll be able to, to, to blot out everything, all the sins, all the things, all the adultery, all the things that you've done for me, if you go down on your face, and you get down on your face, and you say, you know what, Lord, will you marry me? Will you marry me again? God wants all to be happy on this earth. He wants us all to enjoy the good things of life. He wants us all to, to, to have a life of happiness, peace, and joy. But he, he, we can't remember, we can't forget about our, his first love. What he's requiring for us to do. And if we look at the book of Noah and Genesis, he required, he told, he told Noah all what he needed him to do. He gave him all kind of restrictions on how to build an ark and all the things he was supposed to do. And after Noah came into agreement with God, God said, you've been faithful on a few things. You did everything I told you to do. So now I will make my bow. I will set my bow in the earth. I will have covenant with you and your children will be blessed. Your children children will be blessed. All down your line will be blessed. When you come in covenant with God, it's not about you, but it's about your children. It's about your children's children. It's about the line, the bloodline. Promise to God. It's in the bloodline. Relationship. It's in the bloodline. Healing. It's in the bloodline. Deliverance. It's in the bloodline. Forgiveness is in the bloodline. And God is saying, I, I want to repair some things that's in the bloodline, but I can't do it because you got out of covenant. You got out of something that I told you to do in the very first place. Covenant is way different than a contract. We know we have contracts when you get out of jobs and, 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 and we don't know what the job requires and they say, you know what? I'm going to send you a contract. I'm going to send you a legal document and look over everything in the, in the requirements and let me know if you agree to it. We read over it and we send it out. We look at it. And everything looks good. The money, everything looks good. Then we, we put it back. We sign it. And we send it back to our employer or our future employer. That is a contract. That is that's paper. That it, it is binding. It's binding in the legal. It's binding in the earth. But that that don't mean anything to God. God requires a covenant. And you say, well, you know how I go in a covenant with God? Number one, just repent of all sins. Ask God to forgive you and make up your mind today that you want to live holy. That's the first step you do. Honoring God as the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That His name is above every name. And His name that every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. In the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Honor Him with all your heart. With all your body. With all your soul. Make up in your mind once and for all. That you know, you know what? Ain't nobody going to treat me like Jesus. Ain't no husband going to treat me like him. Ain't no wife going to treat me like him. Because I'm asking God today, Lord, will you forgive me? And will you? Will you marry me? Will you allow me to come back in after I made some mistakes? God is saying yesterday that He's willing to put the ring back on your finger. But you have to make up in your mind today to serve Him and Him only. Why is covenant so important to God? Number one, covenant is sacred. Can't nobody just break a covenant with God. You just can't just break it. It's holy. It's sacred. And it's with God. It is not with man. Covenant is not made with a man. A man can give you a contract and sign. You have you sign something all day long, but he can't make this covenant that I'm talking about is made with God and God only. Covenant is important to God because it's sacred. It's, it's his word. It's binding. It's sealed. You can stand on it. He's not going to change his mind. Sealed by God. It requires confirmation by God. 
said, I promise you something. He said, I come, I come in covenant with you, sister, daughter, son, whoever it is, I come in agreement with you. He confirms it. Confirms it with his rainbow in the sky. He confirms it through a prophetic word. He confirms it through a, a divine intervention. He confirms it. Somebody come into the grocery store and they prophesy over your life. He confirms it one way or the other. When you say, Lord, make a covenant. Lord, I, I stand in covenant with you. We come together as one. God would always confirm this word. Signs, wonders, rainbow, a marriage certificate. To make a covenant with God as a husband and wife and say, you know what, we're going to come into marriage not in a secular form, but we're going to come in marriage in a holy matrimony. Pleasing and acceptable to Jesus Christ. God wants us all to be happy. He wants you to, to marry. He wants you to, to live. And he wants you to have your being, but he wants you to do it holy. He wants you to do it acceptable. Pleasing to him. In his sight. Holy matrimony. Not just saying I do because it's the right thing to do. But you don't have God in it. But going before the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, if you don't bless it, ain't nobody else can. If you don't bless this union, can't nobody else bless it. We come and come it with you. Forget about the covenant that we're supposed to have with God. And we're so quick, ladies, men, to get our ring, put on our finger, and God is saying, you don't know what you get yourself into. You broken the covenant. Yes, I want you to marry. Yes, I want you to be happy, but you've forgotten all about me. Seek ye first the kingdom. And all the other things will be added unto you. I'm talking about covenant with God. And God is asking us today. He's asking me. He's asking you. He said, you know what? I want you to get back to that place of your first love. When you first got saved. And all you thought about was me. All you thought about was pleasing me. All you thought about was just, just thanking me and all the things that you've done. All the things I brought you through. All from, by, from a mighty long way. And I'm asking somebody today, I know, I know we got off track. Woo! I know we got off track, but I'm here. I'm asking you to marry me again. I'm willing to forgive you, but we don't have much time. You need to do it right now while the blood is going to warm in your veins. We don't have much time. Tomorrow might be too late. Looking for a church without a spot or wrinkle. Somebody today is wanting to get married. Somebody today feel like they found the perfect wife or the perfect, perfect husband. And God is saying today, seek ye first. Bring it to me. Establish a covenant with me first. And all this other stuff will be added unto you. I don't want you to suffer. I don't want you to hurt. I don't, want, I, I, I don't want you to regret it. We don't have time to fix it. You might not find the next person. You might not find it. The world is shrinking. The world is coming to an end. Get it right the first time. By establish a covenant, a relationship with God. Glory to God. Covenant with Jesus Christ cannot be broken by any man. Only through your, your hateful sin and you denouncing God and who he is. That's the only way that you want you form the covenant with God. That you can break that covenant. And you say, you know what, forget it. I, I don't want to, I, I forget it, Lord. And you, you denounce him as your Lord and Savior. And I'm telling you something, you don't want that. Because you go outside tomorrow and, and you, the next thing you know, your house may be gone. Your, everything could be gone once you break that covenant with God. You don't know. You don't want to break the covenant with God because you go outside tomorrow. You may not see anything there. Having a relationship, having a covenant with Jesus Christ, you cannot just break it. It is a bound. It is a bond. It is sealed. It is signed, sealed, and delivered. You cannot break the covenant, the relationship 
relationship. We don't have a God unless you denounce him and say, you know what, forget about it. I don't love you anymore. I hate you. That's the only way you can break the covenant with God. I'm talking about that God is asking somebody today to come in covenant with him. To be in a relationship with him. To marry him. And only him. Contract is a legal binding. They allow us to be secular into the world. It's a legal, legal, secular binding. Marriage certificate, secular, is of the world. The Bible said what God puts together, let no man put asunder. Covenant reflects the love and relationship between Christ and the church. Hebrews 5, 31 and 32, it says for a, a man to leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, cleave to the wife, the church. Christ loves us. We are the church. Marriage is holy. God wants us all to be holy and present our bodies as a living sacrifice. But I think one of the key things in doing that is we have came out of covenant with Jesus Christ. The man that has given us life itself. Woo! What do we do when we come out of covenant with our creator? Our Lord and our Savior. The only thing we can do is ask him to forgive us. And make it right. While the blood is still running, running warm in our veins, we have the opportunity to make it right and ask God to forgive us. Whew. This word is not a shouting word, but it's a word that holds true. And it's a word that we must abide by. God is, is not just on any and everything. He commands us to do things in order. We're out here living out of order. And I'm telling somebody today, I see a lot of stuff going on. And I see people praying. And God knows, I know you're doing it honestly. You're praying for that wife. You're praying for that husband. And you say, Lord, send him to me. Send him to me, Lord. I've done all I could. I did everything. And God said, yes, I heard you've been praying for 15 years. I heard you've been praying for 30 years. But you don't have the relationship. You came out of covenant. You came out of covenant with me. And you're doing everything. Yes, you're praying for that wife. Yes, you're praying for the husband. But you're doing everything else. And you're not seeking me first. You're not giving it all to me. And you're not letting me handle it. You keep putting it back in your hands, taking it out of my hands. And I want you to come to covenant with me. I want you to give me that bad marriage. I want you to give me that bad child. I want you to give me the problems. Bring them to the altar and form an agreement and say, Lord, if you don't fix it, nobody else can. I'm putting all my trust in you. I'm repenting of every sin and I'm making covenant between you today. Lord, I give myself to you. Only you can use me. How many days have I I've done it my way all my life and it ain't working and I've been praying and it ain't working. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.